Salofa Lava, happy Samoan Language Week. Um, welcome to a new series, uh, Scholarship Calculus. We're going to focus here on differentiation. Uh, the series is called Delightful Differentiation. <laughs> Thanks, team, for the votes on the poll. Um, I love the name. And this series is going to span over the next five weeks. Uh, we're going to look at 25 questions, and we're going to also have some cameos from past students, as I've done in the past. It's awesome to, to have them contribute and um, often provide more insight than I can. Uh, we're going to focus on skills this week. Uh, we've got a couple of questions that involve implicit differentiation, which is a useful skill uh, no longer in the NCA Level 3 exams, but in the curriculum, an application of the chain rule, and often appears in scholarship. We'll move on to some of the meteor topics and differentiation later. Uh, we've got a related rates question coming up this week. Uh, we'll do some optimization problems as we go, and hopefully you find the range of problems in the series interesting uh, and useful to your development uh, whether you're doing scholarship or not. Um, so without further ado, I think Infinity Plus One uh, says that all the time as well. Must be a maths teacher thing. Here is the uh, gradient, um, sorry, here is the function and we're gonna find its gradient. Uh, F of X equals sine X to the power of cosine. Uh, the graph is given so you can estimate it and kind of know that your answer's in the ballpark. So pi over four, um, if you can locate pi over four on the graph and estimate the slope. Um, I've put this question in here purposefully because students often uh, inaccurately use the power rule. It's the first rule you learn when you differentiate functions, the fact that you can bring the power down the front and drop the power by one. Uh, however, it doesn't apply in this uh, particular problem. Um, so anyways, give it a go. And as always, after the intro music, I'll go through the solution. Uh, hopefully you get the same solution as me. Okay, so in this question, um, we want to use logarithmic differentiation, which is kind of like a version of implicit differentiation uh, to deal with this. Uh, what we can't do is, is drop the cosine uh, down the front and then just go minus one. Okay, the power rule only works if the power is a constant, and that's a common mistake made. Um, because the power is um, a term that involves the variable, uh, we want to bring that down, but we use logs to do that. So if we log both sides of this expression, and we use the natural log because we know the derivative of it, so I've got ln of f of x uh, is equal to uh, ln of sine of x all to the power of cosine of x, I can use the log rule, um, which states that that power there can drop down in front of the logarithm. So ln of f of x is equal to cos x multiplied by ln of sine of x. Uh, there are other ways of doing it. You can use exponentials, but I think this is quite a, quite a quick way of doing it. Now, what we want to do is differentiate this, but we differentiate implicitly. Okay, and If you haven't seen implicit differentiation before, it's going to be a common theme in a lot of the videos in this series. Uh, what we do is just differentiate the equation as it is. So just before we get to this, if I had a circle, for example, I had x squared plus y squared is equal to um, r squared. The quick way of differentiating this would be just to differentiate as is. So x squared differentiates to 2x. y squared differentiates to 2y multiplied by dy dx. Now that's the chain rule in action because it's something squared. And when you differentiate something squared, the 2 comes down the front the 2 drops to a 1, and then you multiply by that something differentiated. So it just turns out when we have y squared, the something is the actual um, expression y. Uh, we don't need to do that for x squared, because, well, if we did, it would be 2 times x, times the derivative of x. Okay, the something would be x, and the derivative of that's just 1, so we don't bother writing it. Now, on the right-hand side, r squared differentiates to 0, so... Um, the common mistake there would be to write 2r, and then we just rearrange, and we get dy dx equals negative 2x divided by 2y. So that's implicit differentiation. If I was to do explicit differentiation with the circle, I would need to first up rearrange the circle into a format like that before differentiating, bearing in mind that if we're on the top half of the circle, it'll be a plus, bottom half of the circle will be a minus, so our derivative depends on uh, that. 
Uh, in a lot of expression, a lot of functions, you can't actually rearrange. You can't make Y the subject. So implicit differentiation is your only way of deriving the function. Okay, so in this case here, we've logged both sides to bring the expression cosine X down. Now if we implicitly differentiate it, we need to use the chain rule. So it's log of something. Now that differentiates to 1 over the something. Okay, like log X differentiates to 1 over X. Log of stuff differentiates to 1 over stuff. But we have to multiply by the inner function differentiated, which in this case is F dash of X. Um, if you don't like the f of x notation, you could have written that as log of y, and then it would be 1 over y times y dash, or dy dx. Um, the right-hand side differentiates using the product rule. Uh, the first term cosine x, we need to differentiate that to minus sine and multiply it by uh, the other function. And then we do the reverse plus the derivative of log sine, which is 1 over sine times the derivative of sine. And then we times by the first function, which is another cosine, so I'll put a squared there. Okay, so what I've just done is, uh, you know, this function here is f, uh, and that's f dash, and that's um, just the product rule, f dash g plus g dash f. Okay, and then lastly, the goal is to find the um, gradient, so I isolate the f dash x by multiplying the right-hand side by f of x. I bring the f of x, which is down the bottom left there, up to the top right. So it's f of x multiplied by, um, let's just write this in a different order to put the negative in the middle, cos squared x over sine x minus sine x times log of sine x. Now we need to sub in the value x equals pi over 4 into the expression to find the slope at pi over 4. So f dash of pi over 4 is equal to f of pi over 4. So the function actually evaluated at pi over 4 multiplied by uh, cosine squared of x. Well, cosine pi over 4 is a special, um, well, pi over 4 is a special angle. So cosine pi over 4 is 1 over root 2. Um, and then we square that. And sine of pi over 4 is the same because pi over 4 is 45 degrees. Cosine and sine are the same, except that one's not squared. Uh, minus 1 over root 2 times log of 1 over root 2. Uh, and lastly, f of pi over 4. So we go back to the original function for that. Um, f of pi over 4 is 1 over root 2 to the power of 1 over root 2. Okay, so that can go into here, f dash of pi over 4 equals 1 over root 2 all to the power of 1 over root 2 times all of that stuff again. Uh, that's in an exact form, it doesn't really look like it would tidy up, but what you should do, I guess, is to approximate it with a number, as they say in textbooks. Um, that's an exercise for the reader. See you in the next video.